Hello, welcome to a very special 50th episode anniversary special. I guess it's not an anniversary because I haven't been around for a year yet. Almost though. It's more like, um, what do you call it? Just a special 50th episode commemoration type of thing. That's a lot of episodes. It's a lot of yapping into a microphone. And a lot of listening too. If you've been listening the whole time, that's a lot of listening. So kudos to you for that. It's a great job you did. I think I've done a good job too so far. It's uh, quite a milestone. Or if you're somewhere where they use kilometers, I guess it's more like a, a kilometer stone. I don't know what they use. That doesn't sound very good though, does it? It doesn't really roll off the tongue like milestone does. It's kind of awkward sounding. Anyway, I wanted to kick this one off by talking about wrestling. Pro wrestling, in fact. I think they should teach it in schools. That's my whole stance on this. Because, you know, like, I know there's regular wrestling, like the kind that you do at the Olympics. You know, the kind where you're just on a mat and you're rolling around with a dude or another person and you're wearing those, like, little headbands and a wrestling tights and kind of like a wrestling onesie, basically. And, the you know, the kind you see at, like, colleges, too. Regular wrestling. I don't know what... I don't know what that's called. But I'm thinking about pro wrestling, like... WWF or WWE or whatever it is now. That kind of wrestling, you know? I think they should teach that starting in, like, elementary school. Because... I don't know, it's like... There are a lot of people who just aren't going to go to college necessarily, right? I mean, they're just not smart enough or they're not, you know, they don't have enough ambition. And, you know, what are those people going to do when they get out of school? They're going to, I don't know, I guess you could become a tradesman of some sort or a tradeswoman. You could become a plumber or an electrician, painter, something like that. But, but there's got to be another option too. I mean... What if you want to do something like that involves entertaining other people, but it still involves, you know, some physical activity and it's exciting and it's, you know, maybe there's a little bit of fun involved. It's physically demanding and you have to learn like the, what do you call it? It's not choreography because they're not dancing. It's kind of like the script or whatever, you know? So I'm pretty sure wrestling is, isn't it scripted? I don't know, that might offend some people who think it's real. I don't mean to offend you, maybe it is real, I don't know. But either way, it's a profession that you could get into without having to go to college or learn a trade. I mean, that would be a really good route for a lot of people to take, you know? Maybe you're just not the most book smart person, you know? You don't feel like driving around a little van all the time full of tools and driving to people's houses and fixing their toilets or whatever. So maybe you could become a professional wrestler instead and start teaching little kids how to like suplex and body slam each other. Maybe even clothesline each other. Of course, you would do it in a controlled environment where there's people training you properly on the techniques and everything so you don't have like kids hurting each other, you know, you don't want that to happen. I don't know, what do you guys think of this proposal or this idea? It's a pretty good one, isn't it? I mean, yeah, some kids are just not cut out for being doctors, you know? They're more like pro wrestler type people, you know? They like being hams. They like having a spotlight on them. They like dancing around and, I don't know, tight clothing or something with just some like wrestler type underwear on and some boots 
That's what they want to wear because they want to show off their bodies and stuff. You know, that's what some people are like. Not everyone is like, oh, well, yeah, I want to go to college and, you know, take a bunch of courses and get credits towards a degree. It's not really the path that's appropriate for everyone. And you're just leaving a lot of kids in the dust if the only options they have are college or get a job at a restaurant or something. Just not enough options for kids these days. And I think that's a problem that needs to be addressed. It's like we got sort of a one-size-fits-all model of education right now, and that's just not, it's not going to work. It's, it's not sustainable, basically. There's one thing that I really, it's the 50th episode, and I really wanted to, I really wanted to get this across clearly, that this podcast is serious at times, and I don't want you to be laughing at those parts, because that's not, that's not how I mean it, you know? And if I found out you were laughing at those parts that are serious, I think I would be a little bit hurt, to be honest. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious when I'm joking and when I'm not. So I want you to keep that in mind when you listen. And if it seems like I'm being serious, I want you to take it seriously. And I don't want you to giggle or anything like that. Because it's a serious topic. But you know, when it's obvious that I'm joking, you can go ahead and laugh because that's, that's what I want you to do. So just please keep those two things in mind as you listen. Anyway, let's go on the next topic here. You guys notice that doctors are always late? I think every doctor I've had has always been late. Every doctor, dentist, whatever, eye doctor. I mean, I don't think they're ever on time. Have you ever had a doctor who's punctual? I mean, this is, I think, a pretty universal experience, right? So, like, your appointment is for 4.30, right? But you have to get to the clinic or hospital at least a half hour early, they say, to fill out paperwork. And then they put you in that room and some sort of nurse or whatever comes and checks your blood pressure or whatever. And then once they leave the room, you got to wait a minimum of 10 minutes, I think, for the doctor to come. I'm always wondering to myself, what the hell is the doctor doing during that time? Their previous appointment must be over, right? Or maybe not? Maybe they got stuck with someone who's just blabbing, right? Like some, maybe some lonely old person who just keeps talking. Maybe that's what happened, right? Or maybe they're just, they think it's cool to be late. I'm a doctor, you know, I'm important. I don't have to be on time for my appointments. Is that what's going on? Hmm. I think also maybe that. Doctors are just really horny people, you know? And I think in between appointments, they're masturbating. I think that's why they're late all the time. Just like very feverishly and vigorously and energetically masturbating between each appointment. It's kind of... I mean, I hope they're washing up well afterwards because I don't think it's sanitary to have like your own bodily fluids on your, you know, your uniform or your hands or whatever. Because it is a medical environment where you're supposed to be very sanitary and hygienic. I wonder if the doctors have a special room they go into to do it. Or do they go into the bathroom every time between each appointment? I don't know. I don't really want to think about it too much because it's kind of a nasty thought. Well, some doctors are pretty attractive. For some reason it's nicer to think of an attractive person masturbating, right? Someone who's unattractive masturbating is kind of a kind of a turn off, right? But if you're thinking of someone really hot playing with themselves, it's kinda of hot, right? So if it's an attractive doctor, I guess that's kinda of cool. But if you got like some really gross doctor, the thought of that person masturbating before your appointment is really gross, right? But I really hope that's not why they're late all the time. That's just sickening. You guys ever worked with um, at a company that has a marketing department? I think pretty much without fail, marketers are the 
biggest assholes in the company. Pretty much every time they're assholes. I don't know what it is about that profession that attracts assholes, but it really does for some reason. It's like they've all been watching too much Mad Men or something. They think they're on a TV show and they get to be real badasses who just don't care about other people. It's like, oh, I'm a sociopath. That's really cool, isn't it? I guess it's kind of like uh, Patrick Bateman a little bit. Yeah, marketers. I'm telling you, watch out for them. It's my message to you as I close out this episode. This special 50th episode. Watch out for marketers. They're, without exception, assholes and jerks. And I want you to steer clear of them for your own health and safety, mental and physical. And thank you for tuning in to this special 50th episode. See you next week. Bye.